Um, I just like to go home and eat dinner. Hey, buddy. Um, all right, so before we get really started, I just want to talk about this for a second. So I don't know if you all know, but as much as Puxatani Phil is the prognosticator of prognosticators, there are other prognosticators in the, um, in the country. So um, as you all know, Phil declared for spring. Potomac Phil, who I think must be a distant cousin, didn't agree. He declared for winter. Go Team Shadow. Dunkirk Dave, he's in the spring camp. Mount Joy Mini. She, she declared for winter. She agreed with apparently her brother, Woodstock Willie, who also declared for winter. Buckeye Chuck, he's in the spring camp. And Jimmy. Jimmy. Just Jimmy. Jimmy. Jimmy from where, Wisconsin is in Camp Winter. So I guess. I think if you have a groundhog living in your yard, you can just name it something <laughs> and put it on the internet. Be like, hey, Jimmy, stand up. <laughs> what? Okay, we're good. Thanks, Jimmy. Thanks, Jimmy. I see a shadow. Uh, he said in Moosey's. Oh, it's Groundhog oh, Groundhog ease. Ease. Groundhog right. speaking, Groundhog ease. It's really a thing. They hold up the Groundhog and they say, the Groundhog is in the Groundhog ease. I do not see my shadow. So this is Moosey's. Nope. Yeah, nothing, it's lost. Nothing, nothing, okay. nothing. This is why we're done, because we all run out. All right. All right. Um, just a few uh, repeat announcements. We do have a few lost and found items up at registration. I think, I think actually we managed to empty most of the box this year, so that's pretty cool. Those of you waiting on submission feedback, we have started that process. It is coming, I promise you. All right, what comes next? Who knows what comes next? Rock, paper, scissors! All right. All right. The Guinness is still not here. This would still be the largest rock, paper, scissors in the world, and we still can't get Guinness here. So. If you, how many people have done this before? How many people followed directions appropriately the last time? Yeah, right? Okay. So here's the deal. The, the, yeah. the problem, the, here's, we're going to play rock, paper, scissors. You need to do exactly what I say. What ends up happening is people get carried away playing and they'll beat their neighbor and then before I tell them to do it, they'll go and turn and find another neighbor and then they played four games when they're only supposed to play one and your odds of winning keep going down. So if you want to win, stop and wait for me to say so. So in a minute, I'm going to tell you all to stand up. I'm going to say rock. In a minute, I'm going to oh, start it already. Damn, hackers. I'm not going to follow directions. What happens when I sit down? Woo. All, right. All right, so um, I'm going to tell you to stand up. And then the important bit is rock, paper, scissors, shoot. So it's on the shoot. It's not after rock, paper, scissors, and the scissors. It's at the shoot. And you're going you're gonna to find a neighbor, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. If there's a tie, what do you do? Play again. Play again. Stop. Thanks, Michelle. I, I basically threadlock everything by stopping, <laughs> and then the game can never end. Uh, <laughs> so um, so you, you play until someone wins, uh, and there is no Spock or whatever the extra things are that people do, like it's still a rock, paper, scissors. If you lose, the important thing is then you sit down, right? And that way I have a visual indicator that you're done, and then it will, you'll go, the standing people will find other standing people, we'll do another round, and then we basically do a, what a, a, some sort of sort where you do it half, you know, Half every time. I don't know. I dropped out of CS. Anyway, um, <laughs> once it gets to be a moderately small number, I'll bring, bring you all up front. We'll finish it up, and then you'll get some uh, books courtesy of No Starch Press, who's been the sponsor now for many years for Rock, Paper, Scissors. So. Not that he knew that, but I mean, he, yeah, has, you know, he does now. He does but... now, but yeah, he's absolutely, absolutely been the, the gift of choice for Smoocon Rock, Paper, Scissors. So everybody, please stand up. Did you know that it auto credits you when, you when you steal images from the internet? It auto. It auto. That's crazy. All right. Find a neighbor. Ready? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Winners stay standing up. Losers sit down. Don't do it again. Wait until I say so. All right. I see a couple games winding up. We are. We are. There we go. All Who right. Have a partner. Anyone not have a partner? All right, this people with your partner. raised hands. Okay, where we go? Ready? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. All right, go find, go find someone. 
All right, who doesn't have a partner? Are you, are you Threadlocks, sir? I see you. You can't block the game. You, you have to play. You have, these two gentlemen here in the black have to play. Oh, you're ready for the next round. I'm sorry, I was giving you shit for no reason. All right. Who needs uh, a partner? Who needs a partner? Here, RIT there, with Kurt. Or okay, uh, no. There we go. Oh, you, that's kind of cheating. You might get a buy here. All right, I don't might know. get a, so oh, who, oh, Kyle's over here. Kyle needs a partner. Oh, you got one over there. All turn right. Turn around, Kyle. Turn around, Kyle. All right. I think, I think you're going to get a buy. We have an odd number. Ready? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. All right, where are All we right. at? Everybody who won, come up. Come we're up not, front. We're not winning yet. We're not winning yet, but we're going to play. So come on up front, all the winners. Oh, that was way too many people. You said it was time. Well, we got to narrow them down All to right. 10. Everybody, every, oh my God, I made a mistake. <laughs> all right, partner up. Right, partner up. You don't have to come all the way up now. Partner up, because one of you is going home. Ready? Who doesn't have a partner? Who doesn't have a partner? Raise your hand if you don't have a partner. All right, ready? We got one dude here who does not have a partner. You have a, you have a partner There's over there. Max. Okay, okay, there we go. We're all good. All right, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh. Yeah. All right, half of you get to take the okay. long walk back home. We're going to play one more time. Oh, hold on. Who doesn't have a partner? Okay. All right. Ready? Find a partner. Find a partner. We're good. Ready? Uh, okay. We got it. We got it. You get a buy, sir. Congratulations. Ready? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. No! Excellent. All right. Winners come at? forward. What are we at? How many? All right. Winners all. all. Wait, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 12. That's fine. Do we need another round? We have 11 books. And we have 12 people. Oh, uh, we have our 12 books. Hey, let's hear it for our 12 winners. So. Before, before you get your books, I want to get down to one winner. We've never done this before. Everybody pair up. We have 12 of you, so I want to see everybody pair up. We're going to do this again, and we're going to whittle this down until we have the, the Shmoocon Rock, Paper, Scissors champion. Ready? Rock, Paper, Scissors, shoot. Numix, you got to play, dude. He's doing something else. Oh, he's oh. out. Oh, so you got to buy into the finals. All right. He All right. Beat me. He's the same guy that beat me. All right, come come forward. Whoever whoever um, if the losers can pick their books, the winners keep carrying on. All right, find a partner. Uh, so as a loser, you get to go first to picking the prize. Yeah, ready? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Yeah. All right. Wait, we had 12 people. How does this happen? Well, I don't know. We had some buys going on. It, it, it got confusing. Oh, my God. Nice it going? It's good. This is really, I love it. All right, so there's, th there's three winners left. Who, okay, so uh, let's see, uh, you, you two okay. for the semis. Let's see, ready? Yeah. Rock, paper, scissors. Or is this like best of three? <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, all right, now you, sir. For the final, the championship, what's your name, sir? Either one of you. Ryan, Supersat. All right, one's a real name and one's not. All right, uh, ready? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay, two scissors. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Two rocks. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, Rock! Rock wins it! Ryan wins it! Ryan, tell us your strategy for your win. Just keep guessing. You just keep guessing, he says. That's the most apt description of rock, paper, scissors strategy I've ever heard in my life. Thank All right. you to everyone for that shenanigan one more time. So for our winners getting to go last at the prize choice, I padded their prizes with some Urbane water bottles. Thank you, Urbane. Woo! Speaking of sponsors, just so you know, those of you who've been here before, we go through our closing side sort of fast and furious until we get to schmooganography and then it slows way down for a little bit and then Whoa. we go back up again. I love you guys. Um, <laughs> they've been a lot better. It's been great. They've been a lot um, better. <laughs> I'm scared That now. cracks me up. <laughs> um, as we go through the slides, we'll be pausing momentarily to talk about some of the sponsor contests and to announce their winners real quick. When we do that, you do not need to come to the front. We don't have your prizes. We don't want to deal with that. What we're going to do is if you haven't connected, we're going to point at a sponsor. We're going to point at the winner, and then it's all on you, just so you know that. All right, as of an hour ago, out of 22,170 attendees, we had 2,097 checked in. That's Pretty amazing. Yay! There's a lot of you here. Cool. Cool. Yay. 
All right, speaking of sponsor um, contests, Fortigo ran the F-Bombs 2.0 game. That was the thing with all the iPads, right, or whatever they were, tablets of some sort. That was pretty cool. The high score was 42,970. I don't know what that means, but it's a really big number. The winner was this guy named Chris Wise, and he won an Emacs Tiny Hawk Micro Brushless FPO, FPU drone. I don't know what that is either. Oh, Tiny Hawk. I thought oh, it was Tony Tiny Hawk. Hawk. I thought, like, oh, there's a skater-themed drone. That's a weird crossover. <laughs> anyway, so go, Chris. Yay, Chris. Yay, Chris. All right, moving right along. So, Barcode Marcode, uh, we had eight entries last year, so 19 this year, which really uh, kind of filled up the table, so we actually had to stack at some point because we ran out of table, and someone brought a side table, so that was kind of exciting. Uh, still, uh, D9 and I, as the judges, a lot of really cool entries, a lot of creativity, love to see that. Um, so we had two honorable mentions uh, with VHS by Carl and Infinity Breakfast with some lovely edible 3D printing, but this year's winners, I've got Shmoo Babe by Lisa, Shmoo Hog by Snack Eater, and Puxatani Shmoo by Strain, uh, or Sarain, which is the one right here uh, that some of you may have seen at the party. Hopefully you guys enjoyed some of the fun ideas people came up with. Thanks, see you next year. Thanks, Forgotten. So, I've always gotten a kick out of, out of the barcode contest because every, every year somebody does something I don't even understand. Um, and this year when Heidi said that um, uh, ShmooCon was going to be uh, overlapping with Groundhog Day, I was like re unreasonably excited about it. Um, I, I really, I mean, I'm, I'm into this. This is, someone bought me this shirt in Pittsburgh and it's got Punk's Tony Fuel on the back and I really love it. Um, but to see all the Schmarr code entries that were all like Groundhog Day movie themed, it was awesome. Like it was, it was almost humbling. I was like, it's so freaking cool. My, I, so this is the one that won a lot of effort in this. I think the, the one that really got my attention was there was a, a, a porcelain pot with a lid on it and there was like a handwritten check from a diner and it had all these pastries and stuff in the total. And if you open it up, all the pastries were inside. That's from the scene when he realizes he's immortal and he can just eat all the food that he wants and it's all the food that he ate inside of there, the eclair and the croissant and all of that with the bill for it. That was awesome. I thought it was so freaking cool. Also, you have to watch the movie a lot. To, I was, I was like, I'm like, I know exactly what this is. And people are like, well, it's just pastries. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's part of the movie. So, so and that the clock that one had rewritten, what's the song that plays every time he wakes up? So they had rewritten the song to... I, I got you. Yeah, I've got you. Yeah, exactly. I'm not going to sing for you. I'm sorry. Um, so I thought that was pretty clever. Woo. The thing about those pastries is every single one of them was real. Yeah, right? <laughs> they're, they're maybe a little stale now. All right. So my honorable mentions, if you're in the crowd, you can come up and pick a prize. The three winners are all getting tickets to ShmooCon, whatever next year is. <laughs> they all went home because their entries were really big. All right. Next uh, sponsor contest, the Howdy Neighbor. That's the thing with the house, right? Breaking into the, the house thing on the table from Grimm, right? That's that one. Um, the winner was Team Decoder again with, I don't know, what's the 42 theme going on? That's kind of cool. And they also won a drone. So yay, Team Decoder. You go. Every time we're on stage together, he looks at his phone when I talk. This is different. That's not just on stage. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Why is it different? <laughs> okay. Bruce is going to talk, or someone from labs want to talk about labs, or is Bruce going to fake his way through the slide? Okay, go, Bruce. Sweet. I'm, I'll, put, I'll only use one microphone. Um, <laughs> something happened, and we ended up uh, with a lot more traffic this year. Like... It, an astonishingly a lot of traffic. Um, so instead of two terabytes, it was five and a half terabytes. Well, half the staff actually learned how to connect to it. Yeah, yeah, year. actually. I connected to the ShmooCon uh, wireless network for the first time this year. Uh, <laughs> it took a while, but I trust you now. <laughs> like, I was on the WPA. I self-enrolled and everything. It was great. 
and it was, I, it was really well done. I was super impressed, and I felt like an idiot that I hadn't done it before. Um, uh, all the stats were largely the same as previous years, respect to the number of hosts that connected and that kind of thing, except for the um, uh, uh, types and distribution of hosts. There are more Linux hosts connecting this year, but that also includes Android. Um, and, or some may include some Android. And then there was like 30% was unknown, which was a new problem for us. I don't know why we didn't get visibility on that. But anyway, uh, six terabytes of data in a hotel. Yeah, it's a lot of porn, thank you. I was four terabytes of that. So um, <laughs> when, you, when you think about like, you know, it, even from a conference organizer perspective, like having bandwidth at a hotel expensive and complicated and hard, and they're actually making it easier, right? To push almost six terabytes in four days is remarkable. Um, so I, I, I mean, I get that it's a p service we pay for and all that kind of thing, but it's a, it's a decent service. Like that's a lot of bandwidth. So thanks to the hotel, thanks for PSAV and everybody for hooking us up with, with good bandwidth. Yay, go them. Yay. I was trying to get Daxton to announce the next contest, but he doesn't want to. I'll be back in a minute. Okay. Um, Syscall 7, they did the Bombshell Challenge CTF. Uh, number one team was too many bananas. Number two team was no, no, no. Number three, tur I think they just want me to say these things out loud. <laughs> number three team was Wiggly Worm 91. And number four was zero clue, which is sort of how I feel right now. All right, we're just moving. This is, just so you know, this is slide 13 and 63, so we are rolling. All right, party, who went to the party? Was, I was, for a split second, I was like, really? I have no idea how much the party cost yet, so I don't have that data for you. Um, mad, mad, mad props to my epic party team of whom I'm only seeing. He's on his way back to your house. Oh, he's at my house apparently. <laughs> Picking up the trailer. All right, so to, to Zach and Sec Barbie, um, amazing, amazing job. Uh, I don't know if the rest of your party staff is in the room with us right now, um, but thanks to the DJ, Sec Barbie, Will Austin, and of course, Keith fucking Myers, who has played every year since the first year. So he's been coming back every year for 16 years. So that's pretty cool. My next slide is blank. Yeah. <laughs> Best slide ever. All right, um, Sam, are you in the house? All right. Bruce doesn't know about this. Oh, what the hell? Very quickly. Ladies and gentlemen, we have two lots up for auction today. This is a wonderful lot. I'm going to start off with this beautiful lot of a, um, an original Eddie the Yeti poster. Uh, you might have seen this illustration before. It might even have been on his chest. Oh, and it's never been on your chest, has it? I've never worn one, now. Come here, we gotta do this. Oh, wait, thanks, sir. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Chest buddies. Yeah. Not only that. I signed Sam. the release form. Spam, where are you? Uh, he went to grab it? Okay, so we have a lot of three items. Here it is, come on. Oh my god. <laughs> it's saying bow to my firewall. If you can't it hear. says bow to my firewall. The Yeet Saber lives, ladies and oh. gentlemen. The what? Yeet Saber what lives. What the hell is going on? <laughs> Everybody turn around! I need to go ahead and do the auction now, too. <laughs> this is awesome! Yes! Mubix, come here! Beat it up, bitch! <laughs> wow. Al's not related to me, as it turns out. Um, um, oh, yeah. Hey, Mubix, I just want to thank you. Anyway. This is all Mubix is doing. Yes, it is. So ladies and gentlemen, we have an item, a lot of three items, uh, a, an original illustration from Eddie the Eddie of Bow to My Firewall. We have the Heat Saber of Doom. And we have a small duck, I understand. <laughs> and they all go together. And they all go together. That's this correct. is one lot this inseparable. This is one lot. This does deflate, however. You don't have to take it as is. Let's be clear on this. What you do with it when you get home is your problem and kink. Not mine, just to be clear. 
Lube will help you get past the TSA. I'm not telling them that. Who'll start me off? I've got $200. Who'll give me three? I've got $300. Who'll give me four? I've got 500 from you and from Dave Kennedy. Yeah. Yeah. He, he pre-bid on this for $500, just to be clear. Would you like to beat him? Five oh one. What if I added a Scott, ticket stand to up. Schmoop Remember on twenty twenty one to that? What's that? What if I added a ticket to Schmoocon twenty? And if we add a ticket to Schmoocon twenty twenty one, who? I've got six hundred. <laughs> who give me seven? I've got seven. Who give me eight? Come on, give me eight hundred dollars for a ticket to Schmoocon as well as the original one of a kind. Where's eight? Back Jesus, you're back way back there. there. I've got back. eight. Okay. Who's got 850? It's tax deductible. It is not tax deductible. No. It's <laughs> It is for HFC. Oh, it is for HFC. It is tax deductible. It's an HFC donation. It is tax deductible. All right. Hey, hey we, had, we had two hands up at eight. We're just trying to, was it, was it the one in the back or the one in the middle back? The guy in the back right now, he's got eight. Who's got 850? So uh, did that clarify it for either of you? No. All right. On the aisle. The black shirt or the the gray the, and, yeah. And the Him. Him. <laughs> the one in the back is 850. The, hurry up. Hurry I've up. got 850 in the back. 850. There we solved the problem. Is oh, that thank Jeff? You. That's Russ. Oh Jesus. Who give me nine? Oh, there's Blue Knight. Nine. I've got nine. Oh. Who give me a thousand dollars? I've got a thousand dollars. Pull man up and do the number. You know the number. Give me the number. One thousand twenty-four. <laughs> I want to see something elite. Give me the number. <laughs> okay, he's pushy. I mean, I'm pushy, but that man is really pushy. 1337 from court. No. <laughs> you have never been to one of my auctions before, have you? Hey, hey, hey Josh. Josh, we have to actually end the con. <laughs> I've got 1024. Who give me 1337 for a signed, one of a kind, bow to my firewall for the Yeet Saber of Doom. And I've got it. 1337 from Sec Barbie. Stand up, Sec. She rocks. Yep. Okay, going once at 1337. Going twice at 1337. Who says give it to her? Yeah. Hey. Give it to her! Yeah. Woo! Would you ask Bruce to deliver this, please? <laughs> I will deliver this to Sec Barbie. Sec Barbie, for 1338, I'll buy it all off you so it never sees the light of day. <laughs> wow! That was a. That was quite All right, response. ladies and gentlemen, we have one more lot, and it's really going to be quick. No. Stargate. Nope. We don't? Not yet. Okay. All right. Ah, psych. Oh, yeah, here. Can I have that? <laughs> Bring, it to the party. Bring it to the party next year. There you go. He just said, treat my duck well and bring it back next year. I think even when it's deflated, it's a pretty big duck. All right. That was a great idea. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. All right, Black Hills Information Security, uh, they were playing Backdoors and Breaches. Did y'all pick up a copy of the game? Yeah, pretty cool, right? So the winner... Nick, I can't see it. Weibel House. Weibel House. Weibel House, Weibel House. I don't know. Weebles wobble, but they all fall down. He won the Ooh. Incident Master. I'm sorry, Nick. He won the Incident Master. Fancy, fancy wooden screen. I would love to see the boring one version. The all plain right. wooden screen. All right. Okay, so we just raised some money for um, HFC, so this next number is going to be wrong. Um, through, but through T-shirt charities, and this is a non-final count, the EFF, we raised $6,800, the HFC, 5125 and for the No Starch Press Foundation, last time we checked, it was 4135 so, so again, just real quick on that, you guys aren't buying T-shirts, you're making a straight donation, we're giving you the T-shirt as a thank you, so we, Shmukon bears the cost of the T-shirts, and every single...
drop of your $15 or $30 or whatever you spent with us goes straight to the charity of your choice. So real quick, we're going to invite um, a representative for each of those charities to come up and tell you just a quick, quick blurb about themselves. We'll start with the EFF. Run! You're awfully light on your, your feet, Kurt. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm so glad to be here. I'm Kurt Opsahl, the General Counsel and Deputy Executive Director of EFF. We are a nonprofit organization dedicated to defending your rights online. And we work a lot with this community. It's good to be back here again. We try and help security researchers understand the laws that they may have to face when doing their research and the threats they may have to deal with when disclosing that research. It's delightful to be back here again, and thank you so much. All right, next we've got Sam from HFC. Right, Hackers for Charity, I appreciate you all coming here today. I just want to thank you for your sponsorship, your support. Uh, Hackers for Charity, all volunteer organization dedicated to solving te uh, the technology challenges, primarily for other nonprofits and charities. That's what we focus on. We're kind of like a middleman for making sure that they can be taken care of and they can do their mission, their job, wherever they are in the world. We do cybersecurity assessments for them. We do education and training for them. Uh, we have a computer training center that still is operational over in Uganda. And we do disaster relief efforts in support of primarily ITDRC. If you haven't seen that organization, great technology organization that you should be involved in. It's, you deploy, you go out and support other places that have been hit by natural disasters and help bring them back on their feet again. Uh, Johnny Long wanted to be here, but he's actually at home celebrating his wife's 29th or some form of 10 uh, birthday at home. So um, he really wanted to be here, but he said to say uh, thank you for, uh, for all you uh, who came out to support ShmooCon this year. I also want to thank Eddie, his amazing artwork that we just got uh, auctioned off and the Pinnacle Group, Hack Fortress, War Caller, Dead Pixel, Paranoids, Ken and Josh with their awesomely exploited Cisco Security Gateway and all the donators of amazing coins that you guys have uh, put up for auction. Our booth volunteers, John, Tori, April, Don, Jameson, Drew, my son Gavin who's here and, and growing up in this community. And lastly, I want to thank all of you, Bruce and Heidi, and uh, the great event that we're here supporting ShmooCon. Thank you. Hey, Sam. Like, I know you said Johnny couldn't be here, but like you being here means a lot too, so I appreciate all the work that you do. So it's great to see you, man. Thanks, man. Take care. Yeah, you, uh, yeah. All right, and last but not least, we've got the New Starch Press Foundation. Woohoo! You have to go through the Stargate. You're transdimensional now. You're not the same Bill you were seconds ago. I'm in another world. I just went through uh, uh, whatever it's called. <laughs> time, time warp. Oh, good. This has a clock. That's good, because last time I did a podcast, it went on for 55 minutes without interruption. That won't happen this time. I'm Bill, I run, uh, well, I run No Starch Press, but created this thing. Heidi's on the board, thank you, Heidi, and Liam Randall, and uh, Lost, who's not here. Um, the, the No Starch Press Foundation is a 501c3. I started it in 2017. Uh, we gave out our first round of grants. I'm really happy about that. We gave out 23 grants last year to hackers of various types, thanks to the board. We came up, I think, with a pretty interesting uh, selection. Uh, we need your input. I'm keeps exploding. Like Mike, I'm really not, like, whatever, I can do a dance. Um, thanks for, for the support here, and thanks for what you do uh, for my company, No Starch Press, because a lot of your, well, I mean, uh, frankly, most of the funding comes from that, but it can also come from you, so that can change. Uh, we'll have another round of funding at some point. I encourage everyone to apply. There's no guarantee you'll get a dime. But we, but oh, no, you I might, have, uh, and we, we, the focus is on giving micro grants to people doing cool stuff that's of real community benefit, and uh, we need your input in as as we grow, um, to kind of help us to make sure that we keep making a difference. So thank you all. All right, Attack IQ had a fishbowl drawing. That's complicated, right? And they gave away two war collar dope scopes. I guess this is the second iteration, which is the number two, Paul Carter and Jay Theodore. Yay for you. Woo! Yay. All right. I was really hoping to get this epic picture from Hack Fortress, but I wasn't able to. So you'll have to look for it later. But I'm going to let Bruce talk about this because the, um, the competition this year was pretty epic. 
So uh, this was, I don't know, the 80th year for Hack Fortress. Um, we, it was a joke, it's only been around 76 years. Don't you know your video game history? Um, so uh, uh, for those that don't know, it's a joint hacking competition and TF2 competition where the game environments affect each other. Um, and it's become a bit of a tradition for several universities, including RIT and Penn State, to bring a bunch of people here and they play and they get very competitive. Yesterday we ended up with two RIT teams in the finals. Um, one was students and one was people that presumably had graduated. Um, and, and it was, um, uh, uh, oh, and yes, so um, I can do that too. So um, they ended up going uh, at it uh, in the finals, 45 minutes, uh, tooth and nail. Uh, the uh, um, students were getting walloped for a while by the, the graduates, and they caught up and they got within about 50 points at one point. They almost closed the gap, and at the last minute, uh, literally the last minute, uh, the graduates uh, uh, laid on a couple hundred points from a hack, and then one of the things that we do in the game is you actually have these coins that you can collect that affect different parts of the game environment, including blocking the other team from scoring. So the last minute, they locked it down. The other team, I believe, had hacks that they had completed, but they couldn't get points for it. And I don't know if that would have tipped the balance or not, but it ended the game effectively because uh, they locked down. So good strategy. Uh, it was, it was uh, great to watch. A lot of energy, the whole RIT. At the, at the end, at the end, the winners got up and chanted, RIT, RIT. And then the losers got up and were like, yes, RIT, RIT. And the whole room was chanting aggressively at each other the same chant. And I'm like, I look at my son, I say, I know you might like the school, but maybe let's not, let's not go to RIT. So, um, and this year we streamed on Twitch. Bobby ran the Twitch stream, so thanks to Bobby for, for doing that. Daxton played in this first round, so he actually made it to the semifinals with a bunch of scabs, so good job, Daxton. Um, and thanks to the entire Hack Fortress team for putting that together and making another awesome event. All right, and for the first time ever, I'm gonna remember to ask the RIT students to gather in the back for a photo when closing ceremonies is over. Hey, this is, I'm not, I'm not kidding, this is like the first time in like 10 years I remember to do that. So this big moment for me, all right? Lockheed Martin, they ran a CTF. First place was Bits for Everyone. They won a Hack 5 refresh kit. I don't know what that is. Second place, Turbo. Is this our Turbo? Oh, different uh. Turbo, whatever. He won an Ender 3 Pro 3D printer. And then they had a raffle, which was won by Shushant Sen. Apparently, all right. I didn't realize I put two of these back to back. Uh, Nevada ran something. <laughs> he ran a CTF. It wasn't on the paper, Wasabi. <laughs> the first place winner was Coco. Second place winner was FAAIP. <laughs> the third place winner was Vivma. <laughs> That's a family name, by the way, that you just massacred. Biv, biv, And the clothing drive raffle winner was Jay Theodore. Yay! Thanks, Nevada. Okay, speaking of words I can't say, let's go with this. So this is the Schmookon badge puzzle. Um, we will try to run through this without too much time. Um, so we took the theme, which was Groundhog's Day. A lot of the things are 29 characters here. You're going to see 29 ciphertexts all around. Uh, they are all 29 characters. Uh, February has 29 days this year since it's a leap year. Um, but yep, we go from here. Um, the first stage. Uh, is right here with the uh, columnar transposition. So you start with the badges. If you look down, you get uh, days of the week and uh, number. Those aren't really correct, but what you do is you swap all them around in columns if you align it into um, the month of February there. And what you get is the right answer. And you can see great now, ROT13, uh, the bad answers. So then you go through and you add up all the bad answers that you tried, um, and you use ROT13 on that, and you're, there's going to be two valid answers. And the whole thing with this, uh, the Moosh Trioshka is like the uh, Russian dolls. So what we're going to do is you're going to build on this. So every single time you have to do the columnar, then you have to do the ROT13. Um, after the ROT13, you go to Visionaire. Um, the key here was Shadow. And from there, you read the cipher. You know, the way Heidi did this is so hard for me to read. 
Um, <laughs> but uh, we'll just continue on. Uh, so the rail fence, from there you go to rail fence. Um, and this tripped everybody up, what do you do after this? Uh, if you read down on the left hand side it says IFID. Um, that was supposed to help you think about uh, BIFID. So the BIFID cipher would be next. You go to BIFID um, and you can see each time the plain texts are going bigger and bigger and bigger uh, because it's, you know, we're building on stages here. Um, the key here is 29 and we go to the skip cipher and so we just incrementally skip. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going. Uh, this part has a little bit of uh, 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 stuff in here. Uh, QRS, send more slowly for Morse code. Uh, that's supposed to lead you to a fractionated Morse cipher. So when you go through there, um, you, the key is ground. Uh, you do this all and now you have to take all of the cipher text originally. You add them all up. Um, this is actually the easiest stage is the final one. Uh, so you add them all up. You add them all up. You uh, you mod 256 or, or you mod 26 uh, in order to get the um, get get the final uh, end, and it's what does where was the sixth day of Bruceness? What? <laughs> and it was in the storage locker. So the winners were uh, who were they? A maximum effort for the second year in a row. Uh, they are not here, uh, but Pikachu Mafia was a really close second, uh, and the, you know they 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 got it. Uh, yeah, it was like 145, so, so, but they were able to do it. Yeah, so Pikachu Mafia, if you're around, just come over here and uh, pick up some books off of the, are they here? No, they're not. Oh, no, there they are. <laughs> Yay, good right. job. Thanks. That's the smallest Mafia I've ever seen. And the winners get free tickets to ShmooCon, to our conference, right? Yeah, okay, hey. All right, Grex, I saw you. Here he comes. Should be like more like DEF CON, we're lining everybody up up here. No, let's no. not do that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> words, words I've heard. Be more. Oh, like DEF CON. <laughs> Good morning, Smooka. Uh oh. Am I going to get ears this year, Bruce? No. Okay, all right. Okay. That was a good picture. Um, anyway, hello, Smoocon. Does everybody know what fire talks are? Yeah. Does, all right, who does not know? Okay, no one, great. I don't have to explain it this year. What? Talk while you're on fire. Talk while I'm on fire. That would be fun, yeah. Not if you had one of those special suits. That'd be kind of cool. All right, back on, on top. Anyway, this year we had awesome submissions. Uh, Everybody that was selected to talk, after every talk, I was just, I looked and I was just like, whoa. You, you know, just really great talks, really good uh, endings and, 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 a and actions that we can all take. Um, even the judges had a hard time deciding. So for third place, for the first time ever in, I don't know, like the 10 or 12 years of SmooCon Fire Talks, we have a tie. Um, so for the prize for this is $125, uh, Amazon gift certificate. Uh, um, so these two people are going to have to split it. So <laughs> <laughs> unless somebody wants to donate another $125, they get one book. and they get one book, okay. <laughs> One book that they have to split. Let me know how you report yeah. this on your taxes. Yeah, <laughs> you have to split the book in half. Um, right, yeah. All right, so is Jessen Soto Ventura here? Just stand up if you're here. Hey. Okay, yay, Jessen. So he was one of the third place talks. He gave a great talk Let's on... Let's come up and get a book. Oh, come on up and get a book. Yay. Uh, we like to make people walk. Yeah. Um, his talk was on using Android web views to steal all the files. Great. If, if you have a chance, definitely go and check out the video when it, whenever they come out. It was just awesome seeing this, this live demo going. Uh, the other third place winner was Miss, uh, or, or was uh, Roy Iverson and Tara Wheeler. They can come up and get a book if you are here. Hopefully I said... I always say Tara, or, and then, but I think it's Tara, so. 
Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. So they gave a talk, great talk. Definitely go check this out too. Do unto others a red team ethical framework for offensive rules of engagement. Great research that they've done. Please go watch this talk and support them in their continued efforts there. Now, we get to second place. I'm expecting a big yell at this point. Uh, the, the, the second place winner is Miss Shannon McHale. Uh, so if, is, is she here? Okay, okay, I didn't, okay, come on, do, does she get a book too? All right, book, come on up. Or a non-book item. So, um, Shannon gave a great talk on cybersecurity clubs and what, uh, what students can do to help build those, as well as what we uh, that are more senior in the security community can do to help support them. So, thank you, Shannon. Woohoo! In first place, who I'm assuming will get a book, but they also get $500, so Amazon gift certificate, uh, is Jim Troutman. Hey, Jim. Is Jim here? All right, great. So he gave a great talk. He gave a great talk called DNS New World Order uh, with all the new DNS security technologies that are coming out. Uh, he provided, it, like it looks like it, it would help us and help our, our privacy, but like all good things, you can use them for bad things too. And so he really shed some light on this. Thank you, Jim. Um, so just a few thanks. Oh, did, it, did I have a question? No. no, okay. We're staging. Oh, we're staging, okay. Uh, everyone, I just wanted to thank everybody that showed up Friday night. At least for the first talk, we pretty much filled this whole room. Um, <laughs> I'm not saying anything. And then RIT left. <laughs> uh, I want to thank everybody that submitted, uh, all the people that were selected. Just once again, great talks by everybody. Uh, just great points there. I want to thank the, ju the judges, the same as last year. Katie Moe, up in the first row. Space Rogue, and Sec Barbie. Thank you, thank you. Sec Barbie was very busy this weekend. She's, you know, definitely smook on staff, but then she's running the party last night, and she did fire talks on Friday, so thanks. Uh, and then I want to thank Spucon and all the volunteers, my fellow volunteers. Thank you. And last but not least, I want to thank Bruce and Heidi. Thank you for having this awesome con every year. Thanks for doing Fire Talks, Rex. Um, you set the bar pretty high when you actually give your speakers money. I'm a little worried that ours will try to like unionize or something and like <laughs> demand fair labor. So uh, this is where she's. No, I'm, I'm. I am lovingly holding my husband. Yeah, this is wrist. the please shut up hold. <laughs> Yeah. All right, we are now on slide 44 of 63. Here we go. Yay, spirography! Yeah, it's good stuff, it's good stuff. Can we get uh, Hammer Brothers to come up to the stage while we go and get this uh, party started so that Heidi doesn't kick us off? Um, I, I do want to point out, I don't want to lay claim to any time that has been spent at ShmooCon selling this thing. That doesn't count against our time, does it? No. Okay, good, good, because I, I heard the criticism. So we had about 21 teams uh, playing this year. I would say maybe uh, six, seven, eight, I can't count. Went to South Carolina school, sorry. Um, but the, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the, we had two teams that were really going head-to-head -head throughout most of this. That was Hammer Brothers and Team FTG. But at the end, as we were basically walking up about 20 minutes ago, uh, Hammer Brothers came out on top. So congratulations to them. They get $500 of cold, hard cash, but we also want to uh, recognize Team FDG for a hard fight, and uh, we are going to give you some shirts as well. So we'll move on to this. This was not stage one. Stage one was actually on our website. It was just a simple ransom note. You know, we get these all the time, and uh, we're able to uh, hide a couple things in there, and you'll see where we hid the clue and code word. All this information will be online, just trying to keep it short. But uh, kind of sneaky leads you into the next stage, which is the poster. Um, actually, there were four of these. Each one you had to put in order using the lights on the top of the Washington Monument. 
But this one was kind of special in that you had to use a USB cable. Actually, one person, as you see on the slide, used the easel itself to illuminate. And you'll see Robin here hidden behind the uh, logo there. So, ooh, nice. The, uh, the Batarang, so uh, stage three. If you were to follow our Twitter page, we actually had some Unicode hidden in a post from uh, Shmoo Penguin, I think. And uh, you actually just have to copy paste that out. There's some tools online, or you can parse out yourself a little bit of Python, and you'll realize that there was some, another message hidden in there. So that's on the screen for you as well. And then you have, uh, moving on to stage four, you can actually hide information in a JPEG's ICC extension. So we actually hit a couple things in there. One of them had the uh, code. One of them had the clue to take you to the next. This is where things got interesting. Uh, namely, we uh, shipped it over into SMS, and uh, we had a few people calling some old lady out in the middle of nowhere wondering uh, what ShmooCon is. But uh, so we had to provide some direction. It wasn't an IP address. It is a phone number, but that phone number doesn't take calls. Uh, if you use the right phone number, you'll actually get a response. Uh, that response includes a picture. In that picture, there's an MP3, and in that MP3 is the actual code. All the uh, stages lined up to give you different Batman uh, weapons or tools, and that's basically it. These guys figured it out. I'd like to thank uh, Praxis Engineering for supporting us for eight years, and of course. Batman, for, uh, the franchise for not suing us. Actually, for uh, Bruce and Heidi for tolerating us for now 15 years of uh, making rugs and stargates and all kinds of crazy things and uh, really giving them a lot of headache and a bunch of other folks that are on this slide. And I think that's it. Thank you very much. What was that? FTG, if you can meet us up front. Uh, Mantech had a CTF, uh, 64 participants. Uh, the current, does that mean they're not done playing? That was current as like an hour ago. So as the, are they like the winners? I, no, these are the current top three teams as of an hour ago. I don't, I don't know if there are winners yet. It was not reported to me. There's the status. <laughs> I would like to think there was but a I, climax I like, with a winner, but I don't know. I like to talk about points that don't matter, so could you talk about that? See, I just made up, right? I, so. I didn't make those up. Okay. Those, those were delivered to me. Anyway, I assume that they're going to be announcing a winner sometime soon, but if you're on one of these teams, you're probably not in here because you're out there playing, so. Um, amateur radio exams. Woo. Yeah, how many, of you, how many of you gave up a couple few hours of your time to go sit in that room on Saturday? Yeah. yeah, says Adam, our volunteer, right? Do you want to come up and do this, or you want? Okay. It's a short walk. Yep. I'm in a good spot for it. So. Yeah. So thank you to everyone who came out this year to take exams. Uh, we gave a total of 26 exams to 19 different candidates. Most of you left with a new license this this time around. Uh, we had a total of nine volunteer examiners. Would like to thank them as well for actually getting all the candidates through it. A uh, special thanks to uh, Alex, uh, K1ATP, and Matt, KB1HQL, who this was their first ever exam session. So thank you again, and great to see some more people keeping amateur radio going. That was me trying to get Rick's attention. There. It was real subtle. I'm pointing to the shirt that you bought me, I'm pointing to you, and then I point like this, and he's like, uh-huh. <laughs> Re really? Rick. Subtle. Which Rick? 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 As a Dr. Seuss book. Hi, Rick. Hi. Hi, nice, Rick. Nice moose. Thanks. You are sitting on the moose. I am sitting there. I am. I am. It's really We had bad seats. Wee. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wireless capture the flag. We were back again this year. Thank you so much for having us. Um, since everybody seems to be talking about how many people played, we had 80 people play, give or take. Um, 60 of them or 65 of them actually scored. Um, Phenomenal. When we do percentages, ShmooCon becomes like one of the largest percentage of people to con. Um, the room is always getting smaller and smaller, even though the same room doesn't change size. And the radios that people are bringing in are actually getting insane. Um, we bring 15 Pelican cases. I think the contestants tripled us. Um, there's just guys walking in, girls walking in with just totes and lights and cameras and radios and Jesus Christ, I don't know. Uh, Majestic 12 came in first, uh, $300 uh, gift card, uh, Phobos Cartel in second, uh, probably the biggest up and coming team going around, they've been to about six cons and went from not scoring to like second place and first, and then uh, Blunderbuss is uh, still pulling it out, so thanks for having us guys, we really appreciate it. Thanks for doing it again, it's awesome, it's great work. Thanks. 
So Ted came back again this year. I want to give a big round of applause. Yay, Ted! <laughs> Ted flew this year. He doesn't drive anymore, so it's great because I think that's probably in everyone's best interest. So um, Ted is uh, selling not DVDs this year, but selling SD cards. Yeah. Uh, you coming up and say a few words? Okay, Ted's coming up and say a few words. Here's Ted. You get to hear from the man himself. Ted, you must put in 20 miles in three days walking between these three rooms. Yeah, uh, it's actually not as bad as it was. Since well, now I'm not able to run as fast. You're not able to run as fast. Yeah. <laughs> Take your time. It's more enjoyable. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, and so as you know, we've been here recording all three tracks, and they will show up on the Internet later, but if you're interested in taking home a little SD card, we have them out in the lobby. Uh, you can come get them. They're a couple hundred bucks, give or take, depending if you pay cash. And, um, yeah, I'm also accepting tips. So there's a tip jar out there. If anybody's got any extra money laying around, I'll take it. Uh, but that's about it. Uh, thanks for coming again. Thanks, Ted. Appreciate it. Ted's been, Ted's been part of this community for a long time. I, I, every year I see him, and it makes me smile. I'm, I'm really happy he comes out and, and does this for us. So thank you, Ted. Well, the thing is, Ted does let us post all that content on, well, it's your content, but when you have a videographer involved, you know, there's often process there. And he is fully willing and happy to let us go disseminate that information for free later. So um, I'm not kidding about the tip jar. If you want to drop a dollar no. or two in there, that's not a bad idea. And it all goes on the Internet Archive. So yeah. there's no advertising, there's no tracking, there's nothing like that. So when you download your, our videos, you download them anonymously, however you feel like it, the way the Internet should be. That was Bruce's radio voice, apparently. I'm better. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh I thought I spelled that wrong. All right. Um, slide 59. All right. So, so what are the rules this year? <laughs> I would really like it if you take it home. Yeah. Yeah. What? We have it arranged. Oh. This is a fraudulent uh, auction we're about to have. It's all been arranged. All right, I'm gonna let, we'll let Quadling run with this. So we actually found out that we have a special occasion happening. Uh, Mubix, where are you? So Mubix, you said that uh, one of your kids is having a birthday, uh, a special birthday. Do you wanna talk about it for a second? Okay. <laughs> So we have an unspecified child and an unspecified birthday. There's lots of variables here. If anybody would like to dimension them, we can do that later. But anyway, uh, he does like the Stargate. So what we want to do is take the Stargate, raise a little money for Hackers for Charity, and send it home with Mubix for his kid to have in the birthday pictures. Uh, basically, you know, we've done the, this Stargate has now been at what, two weddings? $500. You're not following the script, sir. That comes afterwards. Like, Don't point at me. Yeah. No, 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 we're cool, we're cool, we're cool. So, but, um, so what? Go ahead. While we're here, help me out. While we're showing, no, no, literally, keep your end pivoted. So the Stargate has had an Massive modifications. <laughs> so for anyone that remembers the original Stargate,